What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Mission Fishing Live. Hope you're all doing great out there today. Another beautiful Thursday. Just one more day closer to that fishing weekend. We've got a good show for you guys today. We're going to have uh, Lane Killian on. And he's going to talk about, um, for those of you guys that don't know Lane, I'll let him introduce himself. But um, if you guys are on Instagram or anywhere in Southern California or you watch uh, this show or follow us on Instagram, I'm sure you're familiar with him. But um, Real cool guy. I mean, great fisherman. So he's got a cool story. Um, awesome tips to share with us, I'm sure. And uh, really looking forward to doing that. And uh, yeah, a couple things in the news. We'll do some announcements. Um, yeah, we're going to have a giveaway today, too. Um, so it should be good. A little, little more, a few more people roll in here and we'll get it going. Cave Dog, welcome to the show. Oos, glad you could join us. And you were here early, 427. I must. I think I. I must have created the stream and left it. I don't think I realized that it would <laughs> go up that early. To be honest with you, that's kind of crazy. Danny Perez. Yeah, you like the title. Thanks, man. Yeah, you were here early too. Doug Ruben El Sueño. What's going on, Doug? Welcome to the show. Iron Fish. What's going on, man? Pohukai. Oos. Welcome back, Graham. What's going on, man? Welcome back to the show. Glad you could join us. Let's see here. Let's just get some new stuff out of the way. Um, one of the few things in the news is, I mean, for us a little bit, Captain Dan sent this to me earlier. I'll put the link in the chat here. Looks like um, Dungeness Crab um, has been closed down. Um, Director Charlton Bowman has assessed, uh, I guess, the entanglement risk. So they're shutting it down for humpback whales, it looks like. Um, the commercial fishery zones 3, 4, 5, and 6, Sonoma uh mendocino county line to the u.s mexico border effective so that was noon so we got a little time effective noon april 15th uh the take in possession of dungeons crab will be prohibited uh, after noon april 15th 2023 in zones three through six um a season closure is being implemented to minimize there we go entanglement risk of humpback whales as they return to forage off the coast of california in response to several entanglements that occurred uh march and april 2022 so it's like they're kind of retroactively shutting it down based on some stuff last year, but we all know a lot of that's nonsense. They just don't want <laughs> they just don't want people fishing. Let's let's be honest. They're gonna put wind, but you can put hundreds of miles of wind plants out there that are gonna be attached to the ground. And nobody's gonna say anything about that when it comes to the whales. But yeah, there's one more thing. So we've got the salmon shut down. And then Dungeon is Crab shut down. I'll put that link in the chat so you guys can see it. It's from a uh, wildlife fishing game directly. Captain Dan, what's going on? Oos, Carl's bad. No travel this week. Glad you're home, man. Good to see you. You just shared that story you sent me in the email earlier. Thanks for sending that out. Basement Boards, yo, first time coming to the live show. Hey, man, thanks for joining. Yeah, if you have any questions or stuff for us, let us know. Or uh, even ask these guys in chat. I mean, they're super good. Great fishermen. Somebody will know their stuff in here for sure. Uh, heading over to Cat and Clemente tomorrow till Sunday. Hopefully we can stir up some sea bass and yellows. Nice, dude. Yeah, good luck. Are you going to um, you gonna sleep on the boat? Or are you like going to camp out on the island or something like that? Brian likes to fish. Spotty Bull Champion, welcome back to the show. Glad you could join us. Let's see. So we're going to have, um, we're going to do a giveaway guys. So we, we've got some new products, um, that I'll share a little bit later with lanes on. I'll show him, show everybody what's going on. So if you want to enter the drawing, all you have to do is type us in the chat, uh, and like the stream and you'll be entered at the end of the stream. We'll go through, uh, we'll put it in like a random generator and we'll choose somebody, win some new products, win some jigs should be cool. So we'll show those off later. Uh, pretty excited to show these off. Hide out in a cove somewhere. There you go. Just anchor down. It's good stuff, dude. Good luck. Hopefully they're out there. And then last but not least, we have this uh, rockfish opener is this Saturday. So 
this is your opportunity to go out and fish for rockfish. You know, we lost a month. Traditionally, it was March 1st. It was open. Now it's April 1st. So this weekend, this Saturday will be the first time you can fish for rockfish this year. Uh, so go out there and get on them if you're going to do that. Uh, it's opening weekend. This is probably going to be a little busy. Uh, one of the cool things is, even though a lot of the time limit has been restricted, um, some of the regulations have been lifted. So there's no depth limit uh, this year. So you can pretty much you know, fish anywhere outside really MPAs and stuff like that. But we went a couple years ago, we got um, the 100 fathoms. So we were able to six, fish up to 600 feet. And this year they've removed the restrictions. Now, some of that time is shorter where we're going to lose the ability to fish the near shore fish, I think in like, in like September, but then you'll still be able to have a uh, slope and what was it? Shelf, shelf and slope rockfish. But right now, as it stands, you can catch any, um, you can go out there and catch any species at any depth, I believe Saturday. So April 1st is the opener. If you guys don't want to go fishing for rockfish, you're not going to be out there in the opener. Uh, the MMFC group is having an outing at Tidelands Park. I think it's launches. They're going to be there at like 7, 730. So if you guys are new to fishing spotties and you want to learn, it's kind of like a beginner's course. Um, they're going to be showing people how to fish. Uh, and it's cool to fish with the group. So you guys want to, it's a kayak event. So if you've got a kayak, go ahead and show up. A lot of guys there know a lot of different baits. I won't be out there. Uh, I think I'm going to go fishing for rockfish, but um, I know Brian likes to fish. Uh, he'll be there. He knows how to fish my jigs. And then he's got you know his jigs. Everybody's got their um, own styles and techniques. So if you've been struggling with catching spotties or you just need some tips or you just want to go fish with a group of guys, uh, this is your opportunity. So uh, check out that outing, Tidelands Park. I believe it's 7, 730. You can probably look them up on um, Discord if you have the link or even look them up on Instagram. So uh, take advantage of that, guys. That means kind of a free event. I know Brian, I think, is giving away a jig. Uh, cool bitch jig if you pick up a piece of trash so uh, you got that as well go get a free jig by picking up some trash it shouldn't be too hard although san diego bay san diego bay is not bad i've heard like some of the ones up in orange county and la are like pretty grungy but the san diego bays i don't think actually that dirty it's pretty good oscar yo what's going on man welcome to the show Captain Dan, there we go. Got the insight. Got that Clemente Intel. Fishing reps, Oos, welcome to the show. Salty Dangler, Oos, welcome. Notice I said Oos. I did notice that. Very good. Basement boards, Oos, in the drawing. Tidelands produced uh, for me last weekend. Yeah, dude. Tidelands has been uh, Tidelands has been popping off, man. That area has been, I've been seeing some good things come out of there. Traditionally, it's always been pretty good. For me, like a lot of small fish, but I think they're they're getting some pretty good, decent sized fish now too. But yeah, there's some good areas there where um, it's pretty good. I went further up uh, last year, um, or not last year. I'm sorry, last week I went further up into the bay, and it was um, it wasn't as good. I think it's probably the warm water. The water was still pretty cold, um, so I think um, it's mostly probably that warmer water pushing them down or just whatever it is tidelands have been, been pretty solid so if you guys can get out there definitely go do it alamitos bay is bad trash pit after the rains yeah it's probably the way it's situated everything just runs in there dario Oos, welcome to the show yes yeah, so without uh i think we got all the news and announcements out of the way like i said i've got some more announcements later on in the show if you guys are just joining uh and you want to win some products uh type Oos in the chat and hit the like button and um, once my wife's done putting the baby to bed, she'll find everybody that typed Oost, put you into a, a kind of a randomizer, and we'll select somebody. Well, we got some good stuff for you guys. And uh, Lane, are you ready? Give me the thumbs up. All right, guys. Without further ado, Lane Killia, welcome to the show. How's it going, man? What's going on, guys? Can you hear me all right? Yeah, dude, you're good. Sweet. Good. So what's new, dude? You just got off of work or what? Less yeah, I got off today at four and then I came home to <laughs> boat prep. My boat's been sitting in the driveway for like two months. I've just been limited by weather. So I finally yeah. got scooped all the leaves out of it, you know, cleaned it, got everything ready and we're good to go. So. Me too. It's It's been a few minutes since I've taken the boat out, but I'm definitely thinking I'm going to take it out this weekend. So 
Lane, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us who you are, uh, kind of what you do, and uh, just give us the intro. All right. Well, my name's Lane Killian. I'm I love fishing more than anything, <laughs> and yeah, I, I work full time at a Whole Foods market, and yeah, I just fish as much as I can all my free time. Everything fishing, eat, sleep, and breathe fishing. That's awesome. I know we see you on uh, Instagram all the time and uh, catching lots of huge fish. So I, I think anybody that's on Instagram has probably seen you. So that's super awesome. When did um, when did you start fishing? I mean, when did your fishing journey kind of start? Have you always fished? Was it something recent? Yeah, I've always fished. My my dad, he he loved fishing growing up. And um, he started taking me when I was super young. He, he always tells me as soon as you could carry a backpack and a fishing rod he's like i put one on you and just sent you we used to go camping a lot in the sierras and like my first like real introduction to fishing was i think at the owens river in bishop that we would just walk for miles up and down that thing just fishing little spinner baits or trout you know little spinners like panther martins and super right. dupers and stuff like that and yeah i mean i don't i don't know my exact age but i was young but, but i've been fishing young, forever. So something you've been doing for for a long time not just like a definitely a lot longer than i haven't yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that that's cool sense? dude yeah. that's that's super cool so uh, for those of you guys that don't know he lane works for fishing reps um fishing reps is basically it's owned by kevin kevin nakata he's you a lot of you guys are new to the stream i know that i know the people that have been on here for a while he's uh basically a fishing representative and he reps our fishing products uh i know submission fishing kicker war bait stuff like that um and you work for fishing reps correct yep yep yeah. i'm a, the marketing manager for fishing reps that's awesome so i wanted to talk about a little bit too so we'll get into the fishing if you guys have fishing questions um obviously let us know we i know we, you've had some pretty special catches and stuff that we're going to go over and uh one of the things i really enjoy too is, is how much you fish i love having people on the show that are like uh just constantly fishing you know I, you guys are some of you guys out there they're just like not just like once a week, but sometimes like multiple times a week, just out there getting after it. And it's like fishing, it seems like here in Southern California, it changes um, so rapidly. It's, it's like, you really got to be on them and follow them. Although, cause they're, it, it's not real spot oriented. Sometimes it's very kind of seasonal and weather dependent and tide dependent. So um, it's like you, you guys that really get after it, have that really have your ear to the ground. So. It means oh, a lot man. having you guys on, dude. It's a grind, dude. Like, yeah, like I mean, everybody always says, "Oh, you're lucky you fish so much." And realistically, I'm <laughs> I'm still putting in forty hours a week, getting a paycheck. You know what I mean? Like, I'll wake up at three o'clock in the morning, work from four to twelve thirty, and then come home, change, hitch up the boat, and go, and come home at you know ten at night. And like, it's you know, I try to go at least twice a week, but usually it falls between three and four. Yeah, yeah man, that, that's pretty good. So that was some of the things I wanted to talk about too. Is um like breaking into the fishing industry and getting into it. Um, you know, cause I get like a lot of messages, um, like private messages and stuff. I get a lot of people like you want to be sponsored by submission fishing and stuff like that. Or, you know, you're always like getting hit, hit up like, uh, how, how they can get in and work for it. So, I mean, the fishing industry is a very, it's an interesting thing. You know, I, I just started selling products like a year ago or so, a little more than a year ago. And, and I've been learning a lot too. So, I thought we'd maybe give some insight, you know, some tips or, or just, I'm curious how like you got into it and stuff like that. Um, and then definitely we'll get into some of that meat and potatoes and the, <laughs> the fishing, the fishing one-on-one like jigs and rigs and all that stuff. Yeah. But um, so you started, you just, did you just start like an Instagram account or kind of how did, how did that come up or. Yeah. Did yeah. You start that? Like when I was a kid, like in middle school, like that was when like Facebook first kind of started gaining traction in like the, I don't know, social media scene. So like Facebook was like blowing up. So back then we had, you know, Facebooks and I was super young at the time. And then, yeah, you kind of like gain knowledge of social media and Instagram comes out. And that was, I was a freshman in high school when I made my first ever Instagram. Wow. Which, you know, I, I, none of it was fishing related. Like back then, honestly, I was like more into mountain biking. I used to ride down to mountain bikes and a lot of my posts were photos from big bear or, you know, stuff like that, even though I was still fishing, but, um, yeah. And like at, at a certain point, I don't remember when this was, it was probably shoot eight years ago or something like that. Nine years ago. Now I, I went to Havasu 
on a on a trip to fish and man like i was catching these fish and it was just like i caught a big old flathead and then i caught like a couple big smallmouth and i was so stoked and i'm like dude man like you know i know i love fishing but i'm like dude you know what like if i just grind like you know post everything like who cares like what people think you know but they might hate it they might love it but you know if you look back 20 years from now you're like man what if you know like Right, I don't know. Right. I just, I'll just love fishing more than anything. So I just figured, you know what, why not do everything you can to try to right, try just... to like, yeah, get in there make connections or like, that's what's so cool about Instagram and like, you know, all the other social media platforms is you can interact like that, you know, it's at your fingertips and right. You know, you can build so much content and you, it almost tells a story and it's cool for you too. Cause you know, you can scroll way down your page and like, Oh man, I remember that day or like, you know, stuff like that. So that's really what it was. <laughs> yeah. I, was... I, I think it's cool. Um, creating like the like you were saying i and that was something i never really thought about um with, like creating the memories since i started i think i started my youtube page before i even had an instagram my instagram is only like a year old i think i had my youtube page uh even before that and it, now i look back on it and it's like it's kind of cool seeing some of those memories that you have like you can you have an archive of things even if like nobody watched them it's like you have it for yourself right like you can go back and be like do you remember that time I was in that bluefin boil and on my kayak or, you know, yeah, it's just, that it's sea cool lion almost that. jumped in my kayak or all these crazy things. And it's something I never really thought about, but going back and like archiving that stuff is like, it's super cool. It's rad, dude. And it stays on there for, you know, forever. You're kind of in control yeah. when, when it comes off, you know? So it's, it's sweet, man. Like just post everything you know what i mean like who cares if it's dink or if it's a giant like it's all sick you know you're you're sharing with people who love the same thing as you you know what i mean it's just you can't overthink it right yeah that's definitely cool so tell me um are people loving your stream quality dude Everybody's is it nice about it. <laughs> oh, let me get to the comments oh 4k just oh, this, is, this is iphone content right here this is yeah. front camera too i'm looking at the screen yeah yeah so who else we got here? Dario, David Christman, welcome. Nick Jones, Oos, 714 OC Fishing, welcome to the show. Dario, yeah, Dario's, he's commenting. He loves that 4K. Michael Solorzanzo, Oos, we finally made it. Welcome, man. Try living in Bakersfield and hauling ass to Orange County on the weekends. Friday night suck. Man, yeah, that traffic. Everybody travels on Fridays, dude. It's, it's like, or even like going home Sunday, like from San Diego. It's like everybody goes from San Diego to like back up to like Orange County or LA because that on Sunday, like that five going from south to north is just is chaos. Dude, there's the, next car, the Carlsbad stack ups always yeah. for me coming south. Yeah. Anytime yeah. after 10 a.m., you're like, you're in it for the long run, dude. Dude, it's brutal. John Escaval, welcome to the show. Wolfgang, what's going on, dude? Welcome. Glad to see you. Hayden is Yo, here live Wolf. for the homies. What's going hey, on, man? That's hey, my buddy prefer? Hayden. He lives in uh, two harbors in Catalina. He's been over there for like five oh, years. Oh, nice. Now. Welcome, yeah. dude. Yeah, four-hour drive. That's that's dedication, dude, but those are the real Gs, ones making it happen to fish. Uh, so tell me uh, tell me how you met Kevin. I, I don't even know if I've heard the story. You know, Kevin, he's like – you know, Kevin, he's like the hype man, dude. So it's <laughs> – I, I, I think I remember him telling me. So I was already working for – or fishing reps, we were already kind of working together. And he was like, yeah, dude, I got this kid. He's going to like, he's going to do the, like this content. He's like stoked on fishing and all this. I was like, you think you really like him? And I was like, yeah, dude, that's cool. Um, and we've gotten to know each other, you know, over like the past year and stuff like that. But tell me the story. Like how did, how did you and Kevin even cross paths or how did that all like, so come this, together? This one goes, this one goes way back. I think it was like in, in 2015 or 2016. I'm not sure oh, the wow. exact year. Yeah. Wow. But at the time, Kevin was working for Hobie, and right. um, I had known who he was through like YouTube or you know Hobie because obviously Hobie, you know. And um, I, I went to Fred Hall in Long Beach with a group of my buddies one day, and you know we were having a good time. We were like drinking beers and hanging out and getting a little loose, and we we ended up walking outside to the little pond, and Kevin was there in the Hobie booth, and he was all by himself, and he was just kind of <laughs> sitting there, you know. And me and all my buddies were like, we're fired up, right? So we cruise over there like, yo, what's going on? Like, what's this? Like, you know, and he's like, oh, well, there's a competition on who can inflate this kayak the fastest. And whoever inflates this the fastest each day of the show gets a ticket for a raffle to win the thing. And we were like, whoa, like, all right. So all my buddies participated in it. We ended up hanging out at the booth for like, I don't know, an hour or something, just kind of shooting, just talking 
smack and, you know, having a good time. Well, anyway, a couple weeks go by and my buddy won. So we ended up meeting up with Kevin at this park and doing like a shoot for it. And anyway, that was the first time we'd met each other. And then, dude, like a year and a half ago, I, I hadn't seen him for, you know, since 2015, 2016. And then wow. a year and a half wow. ago, I ran into him actually at that uh, at Kruger's tournament, at Aaron Kruger's, the team. Battle. Oh, yeah. 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 And I, I saw him and I was like, oh, dude, I'm like, that's Kevin. You know, I was like, so I cruised over to him. I'm like, hey, man, like, do you remember me? Like me and my buddies won that kayak from you. And he instantly remembered you know, because we had a good time. It was fun. And, and you know, we got to talking and we fished the tournament and it was cool and we were friends. And and that was kind of the end of that. Well, then some more time goes by and I entered Spotty Bowl, which is awesome. I mean, I'm sure most of the people in here know what Spotty Bowl is. Yeah. It's, you know, it's that killer tournament series, a kayak tournament series run by Eric Lehman. Um, great dude. Anyway, Spotty Bowl, you can read more into it. But um, yeah, so I entered the Spotty Bowl and I, I kept you know, going each day and fishing. And, and one day I ran into him in the kayak in one of the spots I was trying to fish. And I was like, oh man, like he's already over there. And then the next tournament, I run into him again at the same, at a different spot. And then I run into him again. And then finally we were just like, all right, like, you know, what's going on? Like, what are you fishing? Like we got all into it. And, uh, and then he was just like, Hey man, like, what are you doing after this? And I was like, nothing. He's like, you want to go get dinner? And I was like, sure. So I, I, we went uh, went to Bali High after the tournament and had a beer and some calamari. And we just talked for, I don't know, an hour and a half or something like that. And it was awesome. He was asking me, like, oh, what do you want to do? Like, how into fishing are you? And I was just telling him, like, I love it, man. Like, I, I want to do something in the industry. Like, I would like to make fishing my life, you know. And anyway, a couple of days go by, a couple of weeks go by. And, you know, we were texting here and there. And I was on the freeway coming home from kayak fish in Newport. And he called me and he's like, Hey man, like, how would you like to do it? You know? And he just kind of gave me the details and he's like, this is who we work with. He's like, this is what you'd be doing. And are you down? And I was like, yeah, dude, let's do it. So that was it. That's interesting. You know, now that I think back and I never even put the two to two together, I, I was there when we were in, um, one of the spotty bowls. Um, yes. Yeah. Cause I, me and Kevin were like hanging out over there, right over there by like off of Kellogg. And I think you were in that same lane. I was finishing up fishing, I think. And I, you know what, now that I think about it, I, I don't even remember that, that, but that was you. Cause I was like, yeah, 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 you were there, but I didn't know who you were or anything like that. I remember you talking to Kevin. That's interesting. I never even that day. put two and two together. It was that day. Yeah. See? That was the day he's like, Hey, you want to get dinner after this? It was that I day. Was, I was right there before the first date, man. <laughs> 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 right before kevin asked you out that's that's a beautiful story yeah. dude. hey he asked me out Don't i know forget that he asked me <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious brian yeah. says he thinks he remembers that day too yeah i do remember that now and it was that was interesting because wasn't there was there was confusion about the code yes there was there like you were like oh i've already got the code and kevin was like no we haven't got the code yet and then you guys were looking through we were i remember we were looking through the discord seeing who had the right code or yeah I, it's all coming he, back to me now yeah. yeah he had the right code i had the wrong code you had the wrong, on me, and me, then dude. i had to borrow his marker i remember every yeah that whole day that was awesome i think i did okay that day too i don't i don't know but yeah i remember that kevin said you've uh you missed the story about the wtf tournament oh the wtf tournament oh with the 24 hour one oh yeah that was crazy We've had some good times together, Kevin and I. We've yeah. Those WTF tournaments, we really pushed. You guys fished for twenty four hours straight, right? Yeah, and then yeah. won the won the tournament too, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, we ended up winning, and it was like a race to a hundred fish, and we were on like our, I don't remember what hour it was, but we thought we had had ninety nine, and then we see all these guys cruising by us, and they're like, "Good job, guys! Like, see ya," you know. And we're like, "What are you talking about?" And they're like, "Dude, you guys got a hundred, so we ended up fishing like another hour without even needing to that day." Yeah, that's crazy. That's hardcore, dude. I remember uh I wasn't there, but I, I do remember like Kevin. Um I think he was fishing one of the 20 gram sumos, right? And he got it stuck and he dove or he lost his phone. Yeah, he yeah. dove in the water. Yeah, that was another that was the I don't remember if that was the same day. It might have been, but yeah, he dropped Maybe his not. Phone. I don't I don't dude, remember. Dude, it was like 16 feet deep, and I remember we were like the current was so strong. And it was under the dock and and we were running boat to boat in the kayak like hey do you have a mask and snorkel like asking people and then he finally got one and he dove down like 15 times dude you couldn't find it it was funny i remember that that was freaking hilarious because you did the video and everything 
Yeah, Kevin's actually lost, I think, three or four phones since I've been fishing with him in the ocean. Yeah. I've lost two, so I've been there. <laughs> that video you... Oh, yeah, the one that I put on. That was pretty yeah. funny. That's pretty <clears throat> cool, dude. Yeah, no, we've gone... You know, and since then, it's... So I guess one of the things that's... Although I do want to say, when, when you were telling me the story about the inflatable thing, I was hoping you were going to tell me that, like, he was just trying to get you guys to inflate the kayak and nobody won anything. But you guys actually did win a kayak. Yeah, so uh, there's actually there's some controversy with that too because I I he he told us that it would be a raffle based off of each day's winner, but me and my buddies think that I don't know if this is like weird to say or anything, but because we were so like you know playful and like we had such a good time, we thought that he picked my buddy to win that because of the experience. You know, I don't I don't know if it was luck or not, but me and me and my buddies have always wondered like if that's actually really what happened. You probably you probably kept it true yeah i probably oh kevin kevin says there was a raffle there was a raffle yeah dude see like my buddy to this day he's like no he had to have picked us dude that was so much fun and i'm like i don't know dude Hope that's cool big. man yeah and that's super cool and then the um kruger's tournament what were you doing you just because you didn't fish that tournament did you i did yeah oh, you did fish the tournament yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah, didn't I, know that. Okay. Yeah, you know, I had like a misunderstanding, I guess, too, because at the time I was like really trying to push. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to enter every tournament I possibly can. Like, I'm just going to talk to everybody I can and try to, you know, make a name for myself or it, it, I guess, so to speak. But yeah, and then we showed up and it was a team tournament. So I actually hopped on a DFA's team for that oh, tournament. Okay. okay. Yeah, because, you know, that was before I knew anyone about anything about MMFC. I didn't know anything about DFA, like nothing like that. So I just showed up like, hey, I'm here to fish. Oh, yeah. Because I was on Kevin's team that day. It was me, Kevin, and I think we got second place. I, yeah, we, I think we got like, I don't remember what we got. Yeah, I don't think we won, though. I think Salty won. Brian, Salty, Roman. I think, right, you guys were on the winning team. I think we were second place, and then I think Kruger's team was third. Uh, but yeah, dude, that was that was a fun, fun time. That was Definitely fun. That fun. was the first time I got a taste of like that tournament, like you know, oh, mental side, dude. Because yeah. Kruger rolls by me, right, and he's like, "How you guys doing?" And I'm like, "Dude, I'm like, we're kind of eh, like my biggest one's like fourteen and seven five or something like that." And he's like, "I was like, how about you?" And he's like, "Dude, nothing. We haven't caught anything." And then we get to the weigh-in, and he's got like two sixteens or so. I'm like, dude. I'm like, dude, he totally cookie jarred you. Dude, That's yeah. Hilarious. And then, and then in Spotty Bowl, oh yeah, Brian Jesse was on our team thing. too. Dude, oh. That's funny, man. That's so hilarious. The mind games. It is, man. That's that's a sign of a true pro right there. That's hilarious, man. Had me, dude. He really had me. I was like, oh man, I'm doing good. I was like, oh. So I mean. That's interesting. So to tie it all back, so what do you do? What, what's your official title for um, fishing reps? Uh, my official title is marketing manager. Okay. And you're working with, you work with Kevin, you work with all the different brands and stuff like that too. Yeah. 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 So it's like, yeah. you know, just building content and, you know, trying to get more reach like through right. social media and stuff like that. And so what's like, what's ultimately like, what's your end game? Do you want to be, like fishing full time, like be able to quit your job and fish, or is it just kind of like a, a side, kind of like side hustle thing? Where no, what do you well, see? What's the ultimate vision as far as your your future? Is fishing just a hobby, or is it something you want to make a career out of? How oh, I want to fish. Oh yeah, I'm I'm looking to fish for for sure. Right now, it's it's you know I'm like working full time, obviously, so I'm balancing both. But yeah, the ultimate goal, I want to be on the water as much as I can. And if I'm not on the water, everything on land, fishing, like everything, man. Like I, I'm so obsessed with it. Like it's just my life, literally. Yeah, super awesome. But I mean, you're starting to make a little bit of money doing it, right? Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's cool. And, and that's one of the things, you know, I want to talk about too is like, like I said, I get so many people kind of asking and then me as somebody that's kind of started a bait company, um, and I know, so I pay Lane um, to do my uh, Instagram. And the reason I've done that is because I worked with him, right? I worked with him through Kevin. And I was like, hey, dude, just he does some posts for me every week and kind of manages it. It's like I do some of them, and then you do a lot of them too and keep it up and make sure it takes a weight off my shoulders. It's something else that I don't have to do. Uh, do you really know the game? And one of the things I wanted to hit on is 
and you you kind of so I wanted you to tell your story to see how it related, but um, it really did is that when I tell these people that like want sponsorships or they want to learn or they want to fish like full time is that you have to like you have to be there, you have to show up, you have to you have to get involved, you know. And I think you can't just go up to somebody and be like, "Hey, I want to fish for a living," or "I want to be a sponsored partner," you know what I mean? Yeah. And somebody's got like. 10 followers and they don't really keep up on it. And unfortunately it just doesn't work like that. You can like these companies, but um, you really got to make your time available. And it, it really, that goes for like any business and the same thing in like real estate or any, any type of business, anybody will tell you that it, it's, it's a relationship business first and foremost, it's all about relationships. Um, it's all about people, you know, and the only way to do that is to like, get out. And like you were saying how you were going to these events. It's like, you guys got to, be familiar with each other. You got to know the who's who. The only way to do that is just no strings attached. Go fish, but go out there and meet people. Show up to the events. When MMFC has events, you go to them. When tournaments are happening, you go to them. When trade shows are there, you go to them. You know, you see people, you talk to them. You, you have to, you have to actually be out there making an effort to be involved with these things with no money, no strings attached. You just got to be out there doing what you love. And luckily fishing is like, it's something that people love to do. So it's, it's not like <laughs> not torture, right? It's not like you're trying to break into something hard, but uh, just bringing value to, to uh, people and establishing yourself, I think is key. And that was one thing I heard that you did that was so true where you just, you would show up and go to tournaments and then you see Kevin again and just really keeping that contact, even just showing up at the Hobie thing, right? What was it? Seven years later, five years later, whatever it was until it came full circle again, that uh, you were working, but uh, you inflated the rafts, you made a good rapport. And even though you disappeared, it's like that seed was sown, um, you know, a, a long time ago. And it ultimately it ended up, you know, turning out, you know, for, for a positive, for sure. Yeah, no doubt. It's like, I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? You know, it's a, it, your day to day life is the same thing. You're still talking to people. You're still doing this or that, whether it be work, which you might not be too stoked on or like whatever. But if you if you go like the thing that's cool is you're going to a fishing event, no matter what it may be, a tournament or a, a shop or a show or like anything like that. You walk in there and you're immediately surrounding yourself with people who are into the same thing. So, you know, as long as you go in there and be yourself and show face and, you know, make some jokes and have a good time, like, you know what I mean? Like people remember that and you'll find your, you know, your little niche or your, your group or people who, you know, like the same fishing you do, or, you know, and then you can talk to all sorts of people, like people who do some sort of fishing you've never seen before and you can learn something. And that's another thing I think that's super, super important too, is listening and learning everything you possibly can. Yes. Sponge, it, sponge it up dude like for sure from <clears throat> everything you can 100 percent. yeah i totally agree and just um you know if these companies are like going to a trade show just be like hey message somebody and be like how hey how can i help if you go over there and you show up and you help somebody you help one of these companies just go set up or whatever it is i mean trust me that's that's the kind of stuff that's how you get your foot in the door that's how you get invited on boats. That's how you make the connections. That's how you, you know, get invited back. It's like, you got to actually do the legwork. You know, you can't just sit by your computer and the Instagram is great because it shows like the fish you catch, but ultimately you've, you've got to be out there connecting. Um, you know, I didn't really get into, I've been fishing charter boats and all that stuff since I was a kid too. And I wasn't like as hardcore as a lot of you guys. I grew up in the mountains. I didn't have that much access, but I was always fish my uncles and my family. <clears throat> but it was it wasn't until recently, you know, I came in kind of that whole pandemic thing, and it was like all the connections were just like I joined the MMFC group, right? And then from there you meet people. That's where I met Kevin. I started making YouTube videos. Kevin and saw some of my YouTube videos. Then we went on a fishing trip together and got to talking and to know each other, and then you just go down the line, right? You meet Brian. Brian likes to fish and he's involved. He knows bait making. And then I meet Afrin for more baits and he helps. And it's like this whole network just goes, but the whole point is you, you have to, you just have to go. <laughs> you have, you have to yeah. show up and meet people. You have to be involved. You know what I mean? It doesn't just, 
you can't just sit on the sidelines. So that, that's just my advice to people that are like looking to get into it. Cause I know that's my DMS are common with that is like, how do I get sponsored and stuff like that? It's just, just show up guys. Just when there's events going down, just go meet people. You got to go meet people. You got to make relationships. And I, I mean, I think that's, that's the moral of the story. And just listening to yours, I never heard it before, but I knew it would be a whole kind of thing where you're showing up and going. Cause that's just how it, that's how it always works you know you know what too it's like another thing I, I tripped out on which you know like don't get me wrong like i've been fishing for pretty much almost my whole life so i know you know a little bit about fishing but i don't know i didn't know much at the time about the industry of course so when it's totally different like you know i work for a huge company like a corporation and and that you're like you know you're like this like you know like right. realistically and you come into the fishing industry and it, it's it's really like built off of trust in a sense. You know what I mean? Like it, it's your word goes a lot longer. Like you're not signing, you know, a, a million, you're not doing these trainings and like doing all this stuff that that's super like, you know, work related. It's more of like, you know, if, if Muto tells me that this guy is super cool and he's a good fisherman, I'm totally going to believe him. You know what I mean? Right, it's like right. stuff like that, you know, and then, it, you know, bouncing that off of showing face and making connections. If you make a connection with somebody who has a connection with this guy and then you know what i mean then they're going to speak on you and that goes a long way too yeah it's, it's that's, all interconnected that's, that's, that's a good point you know it's like any hobby or anything the fishing world is like relatively small it's it's huge fishing is a huge industry but like through what is that like what's that kevin bacon thing like the tens or the separate they like everybody knows kevin bacon and like the acting world have you heard that like I, I forget what it's called. There's somebody in here will know. It's like the separation or something of like Kevin. Like everybody's related to Kevin Bacon in some way because like movies he's that way. The fishing is really the same way. It's like everybody will know somebody that knows somebody. Everybody knows of someone. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. If, okay. And if you have an opinion, like yeah. if you want to know what's who somebody is and you don't know them, somebody close to you will know of that person or who that person is. And like you said, know if they're cool um you know if they're a douche or whatever it is like who to avoid but it's like i would say most people fishing are pretty cool i mean yeah for I, sure. I would say the majority like 80 to 90 percent of people i meet are like are absolutely cool i've had very very few negative interactions with fellow anglers personally i i haven't yeah haven't had too many you know issues with that no i'm right six, there six, six degrees see i knew they knew six degrees of separation Mm. so it's sort of like somebody knows somebody whether they worked with them or they knew them or they know somebody that knows them it's just like that's how the fishing world is it's it's very 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 small uncle catch fishy in in the chat <laughs> they made fishing the a-rig legit yeah man you love fishing the Avery. Yeah. So, I mean, we can, I just wanted to touch on that. I just, just thought it was really cool. You know, get a little bit of bit, your backstory and just give some encouragement to people too. You know, it's not like, it's not an impossible thing, but you have to make, just make yourself available, make connections uh, and just show your face. It just, you just, you've got to be known. Uh, you got to have a good reputation. You know, people got to trust you and learn to fish too. Cause that helps, right? Like go win some tournaments, go show up a little bit and, and that just goes back to the whole thing too. You got to win some tournaments, but you got to grind, man. You got to fish, but that all comes with it. So that's all, it's all time on the water, man. Just dedication, time, 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 time. And it's all fun. You know yeah. what I mean? It's fun. Like, that, that's the thing too. It's not like, <laughs> yeah, like it's not like you're working your way up the corporate ladder. It's like, dude, you're having a blast. Fishing's great. Dude. Yeah. Every step is fun. Literally everything. And if hard. you're not into it, it's not a big thing either. Like if you just fish to have fun and you don't want anybody to know your name, I mean, that's, that's perfectly acceptable. This was just more, more towards people that approached me that wanted to kind of know <laughs> how, kind, kind of how to get into it. And even our relationship too, it started that same way, you know, cause I got to know you through Kevin and then, you know, you've been on my boat, we've gone fishing. Now I see you at all the events and you fish my product and it just, it, it's all kind of worked out, you know, it's it's great. Rad. It's awesome. Kif Fuentes says, I know Lane and I don't fish. Welcome to the show, dude. Got to get on that. Got to get on the water. Kif <laughs> <laughs> says, I see. We told you guys are killing it. It seems like submission. 
fish. Either. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're doing we're doing pretty well. We're doing good, and that's all because of you guys, man. Hundred percent. You guys are. You've been behind me fishing the jigs, posting that stuff. I mean, that's like from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys, because that's you guys are everything, man. It's hundred percent truth. Uh, Dave Rage wanted to know if you were in San Diego. No, where are you from? No, I I live in Placentia, so it's like it's Orange County. It's like between Fullerton and Anaheim. Cool. Yeah. So I'm, is that I'm your that's your main from. spot that you fish? Yeah, uh, just Newport. Just the, yeah, just it's Newport and Huntington or like Huntington Harbor. They're like the same distance from my house. I just usually go to Newport. I like grass fishing, you know. Chaprak, what's going on? Oos. Yeah, man, that's cool. So um if you guys you know we got the rockfish opener coming up, and we've got um if you guys type oos in the chat, you'll be entered for a drawing. We got some new products here that I'm gonna show you guys real quick. And you guys can win some of these things. So if you type oos and like the stream, at the end of the stream, we'll go through. We'll, everybody that says oos will put into a generator. We'll put your name in, and then you'll win some of these. Just shoot me your address on Instagram or whatever. Uh, if you're a returning customer, I might have it you know, already in the system, and we'll get you some stuff. But uh, just before rockfish season starts, we've got – let's see what the other one is. Here we go. We got some new ogres, except we got new 80 gram jigs. This is the new macro color. So we basically took the ogre, made it. So this is like for that hundred, kind of that hundred foot range to 150 foot range. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's got that grid pattern and the paint. The lighting's probably not the best, but here you go. See if you guys can see the. It's got like the scales on it and stuff like that. So we got the ogre and the 80 gram. It comes with hooks. We only got the two um, two colors. We got this one. And then we got the rainbow row color that everybody loves. So these are 80 grams. I'm super psyched about these um, just for rockfish, even like yellowtail, stuff like that. I mean, we've been looking for kind of like that mid-range uh, 80 gram range. So those are available for sale now. Uh, they're live on the website if you guys want to pick some up we're going to give some of these away should we give them both away to the same person or two two different maybe i'll do two different raffles so somebody can win one yeah that, that'd probably be the way to do it so Those things are sick check that out yeah man <laughs> these things are freaking nasty and um also we got the 10 we have a very limited stock 10 and 15 grams are back live online um we got some new reps young's tackle picked us up uh they have their order uh so young stackle for you guys i want to check them out we got um bob sands tackle and they're at uh the bart hall show so go check them out they've got a booth i don't know if they have our stuff there but uh, definitely go support them and then uh, la fishing alliance has picked us up as well so we got kind of three new tackle stores we're going to be in their order is probably going out uh tomorrow or so but um you know they've got full stocks of a lot of them got 10s, 15 grams, 20 grams. So uh, a lot of them got the gamut. So go get them. Hogan's got a new restock. And um, so go support those local tackle stores. And like I said, I do have 10s and 15s online. Very, very, very small supply. Uh, very limited supply because I've got a lot uh, guaranteed to tackle stores. Um, Dana Landing, go get them there. They ordered a whole bunch. So they should be good to go for a little while. So should be good stuff. Show a comparison between the ogre oh yeah you want that look at this so if you guys want the this is a 600 gram ogre <laughs> this is the tuna killer this is the 80 gram so you can see kind of the difference in the in the jigs this is the biggest one that we make this is for tuna big beast um so the only thing with the the ogre is we kind of I think we're going to rename the small one. One thing I didn't take into account because the description is like, is for giant tuna and like big fish. And it's not, I don't think you're going to catch a cow tuna on one of these. So we'll probably change the name to like the goblin or something. And then it'll be the same shape, but that way we don't have to redo all the, 
So the packaging you get is all worded for Big Tuna. I didn't really catch that until we got them in. So I don't know what to do with that. I guess on the next <laughs> reorder, <laughs> we'll have to address that. You can change the name or like change the thing. <laughs> yeah, dude. First one down, first one bit, man. That's why we make them. We make a 400 all the way to a 600. So yeah, dude, those 80 grams are sick. I think those going to be like that rockfish kind of yellow tail, that like island kind of shallow rockfish killer right there but we'll see yeah so we're going to give a couple of those away um maybe we'll do some other ones or something there's another 500 gram big samurai jig so if you guys want to win one type oos in the chat get yourself in and we'll get you hooked up hopefully you win so lane let's see back to the fishing if you guys have any questions let us know so do you um what's your favorite um what's your favorite bass fish favorite saltwater bass calico spotty or sand bass uh probably calico calicos your calico yeah. I, th I think that's an orange county thing for sure <laughs> isn't <laughs> Maybe, it I, I, I love the sand bass too i love yeah. catching sand bass but i've caught to be honest i've caught a lot more big sand bass than i have calicos and like there's something about like surface fishing for calicos it's just so like it's it's really visual a lot of the time too you know if yeah. you're using like a nine inch swim bait a lot of times a calico will swim up and bite half of it and then they don't have the hook and you can see that and they'll finish you know? it right you just yeah, yeah and you keep winding you keep grinding them grinding them and then you see them like er, er, they climb up the thing and it's like it's amazing it's cool but i'd so say what, calico. Yeah. what's the rank calico sand bass then spotty yeah yeah spotty calico on the bottom <laughs> Spotties oh, are rad. Man. I love spotties too. Brian's, like, Brian's about to go into cardiac arrest over here, dude. <laughs> no, spotties are epic, dude. But I don't know. It's just, you know, sometimes a lot of the time I want to get like a, you know, a 10 pounder. That's the goal. I want to get a 10 pounder. That's funny. Yeah. I think I'd probably say sand bass, calico spotty. I, I put the spotty on the bottom. I, spotties are great. Like you're saying, I, I do love spotties. You know, I caught a spotty last weekend and it was like, I hadn't caught a spotty in a while. And I was like, it was pretty fun. I was it's like, rad. I forgot. I was like, yeah, I forgot how badass these fish are. Like, cause I've done spotty one. I, I fished them so much, but I hadn't targeted spotties in a long time, but I wanted the trifecta. Cause last week I got a calico and a sand bass. So I'm like, Oh, I'm going to go to the docks and get a spotty. And it was like, I saw I hooked, that. I hooked up on a 15 incher and it was like, Dude, it took me for a ride. I was like, uh, these yeah. are pretty fun. I was like, sometimes I forget. I was sleeping on this body a little bit, but they're they're all pretty close. I mean, I mean, I, dude, I, they're pretty pound, similar, but yeah. Pound for pound, dude, a spotty goes. Yeah. Like that thing will pull. I like sand bass. I just I like that weight. I I like because they come up, maybe because I like I'm a jig fisherman and it's they come up and get it, dude. Like when you send down a slopage jig and it's like, you can tell they've like, they swam up like 10 feet and they yank it back oh, down. And yeah. it's just like some of that it, feeling. But yeah, That's super sick too. Like uh, about sand bass is that you can, a lot of times if you're like looking for them on the meter, you can see them in schools and then you can drop on it and see it happen. You know, like yeah, you can see yeah. the fish come, you know, it's uh, like calicos. You don't really get that unless you're fishing vertically, but yeah, the sand bass hard structure stuff. That's so yeah. fun. dude. Yeah. But the calicos, like I said, they're fun too, because, they're like mini pelagics, like they'll chase the bait, you know. Yeah, and you can I can't tell you how many times they've like they'll follow your lure to the boat and then they take off, you know, at like the last minute. And you can <laughs> you know they've been following like your surface iron or jig or whatever it was, and it, that's pretty cool. Like th that's fun too. And they're yeah. all different, they're all different fishing, which is nuts. It's like I guess spotties and sand bass are kind of similar, but it's all kind of like different areas, different zones, and oh yeah, even though they're all saltwater bass, it's like different techniques, sure. you know oh yeah you trip out though too like you can catch another thing that's crazy is you can in some zones not all but some like especially like inner harbor zones like you can catch all three of them the same way like down yeah. deep on a rock pile or something like that and then you go you know to a place there's like you can catch you can't do that like like at san clemente island i don't think anybody's ever caught a sand bass there no oh, interesting yeah they might not just live there that's interesting yeah like i don't know yeah. but that's all surface fishing you know yeah Cause like the trifecta I got last week, I got them all in an assassin. They were different sizes, but they were all the same slow death assassin. One, I think, well, I think the calico and the sand bass came on the 60 gram, a gold and a blue. And then I just went over and got mm. a spotty with like a little 10 grammer, but 
all the same jigs, just just different sizes. That's cool. Salty Dangler says spotty calico sand bass. Damn, poor sand bass. No oh, love. Sand bass, the bottom. <laughs> He's spotty. <laughs> number one. That's that's what I'm saying though. I think Orange County guys are like, the dudes love the calico. And I think San Diego guys love the sand bass. Like, I mean not the sand bass, the the spotty more than anything. Oh my my dad's watching and he just texted me. He said, I agree with Muto, sand bass on top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Flow roll B JJ MMA. Welcome to the show. Spotty's around fire right. Yeah, dude. Spotty's so like it what's it like up in um Orange County, but like it seems like the quality of fish has been like so good this year. Yeah. Like, I've seen so many like big spotties. It's been just crazy, you know. It's dude. where's mine, dude? I still haven't got one of those big ones no? yet. No, not yet. I haven't but, fished them, but the one time I did, I got it, like my first one I pulled out was like 15 inches, and I was like, "Damn!" But I've yeah, been seeing yeah. people's pictures. Like, Salty's got like an 18. I've seen some dude post like a 19. I was like, "Dude, I haven't yeah. seen that in like years." Yeah, 17s yeah. like all over the place. It's been crazy. They're up here. I mean, you can like a four a 14 inch bass like in Newport or Alamitos is is not very uncommon. You can get on those like pretty consistently, especially like when, when the summer comes and you, you know, like the bite really turns on up here. Like you can, you can get a pretty good bag, but it's totally different. Like right now, at least in my experience, like locally Newport, mostly I haven't really spotty fished anywhere else besides San Diego recently, but like the bite up here has been super weather dependent, like extremely weather dependent in the Bay. And I, I think that has something to do with obviously temperature, but like water clarity. Cause like up here it bites real good after the rain. Like if the water's like super murky, they still eat super good. But down in San Diego, like Kevin and I went shoot like almost a week ago and it, it was like wide open. Like it's just next level. Like for yeah, me, it's pop off. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Poe Cam wants to know where do you like to fish in Newport out of the harbor or in the harbor? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, mostly when I go to Newport in the kayak, I'm just harbor fishing. Like I, I like fishing the grass. So I spend a lot of time like in the mooring cans or um, like some of the channels near the beach, they have super good grass beds, but there's also outside of Newport, there's some areas that have pretty good calico fishing. I know a lot of guys do good sand bass fishing in Newport. I haven't done too much of that out of there at least, but yeah, I'd say the harbor, uh, harbor fishing is pretty good. You can catch there's, there's Sandies and calicos in the harbor in Newport as well. Nice. What do you, so what's like your go-to when you're, oh, we got some more here. Leonard says spotty, sand bass, calico. Brian says spotty, spotty, large mouth. <laughs> <laughs> My PV sand bass is like 12 ounces. Really? Just go to the bait bars, dude. Yeah. Chet says calicos, top instant bite. Spotties and sandies are bottom, uh, but take some time. Yeah, sandies do the body rolls. Spotties are just mean buggers. Yeah, 100% dude, I agree with all that. Dude, Sculpin are not good fighters, Salty. I I gotta I gotta disagree with you on this one. You don't think so? <laughs> Sculpin? Off okay, no, off the dude. initial hook set though. Off the initial hook set. Fighters? Like I've I pulled up some good sized sculpin. I was like, every time I probably feel like, oh, I got some seaweed on the end of my thing. And it's just some big sculpin. I think they feel big sometimes because they open their mouth and it just like creates a drag, but it's dude, never they been, got like, those side fins that are like but I've never had one like pull drag or anything. Oh no, no. Salty says sand bass tend to give up three seconds. Oscar says sand bass body calico. And we got we got the mix here. I like it, guys. That's what I like. What is that? What a haze you get a hard bite, good fight. Think it's gonna be something good, but it's a five inch scorpion. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> That's funny. Jesse said he's got many 16, 17 inch alamitos. So speaking of the, um, let me see here. Uh, speaking of the bay, um, Newport Bay or Newport, what do they call it? Harbor, Newport Harbor. Either Newport one, bay. I think. I think either one. So let's talk about. <laughs> Let's talk about this thing. Yeah, that was really something. So you got 
I, I mean, I've heard of the Broomtail Grouper, like, in the Bay, but I've never actually, I've never seen one in person, to be honest with you. I think you're you're maybe the only person that I know personally that's caught a Broomtail Grouper in California, much less in the Bay. So, I mean, let's talk me through this one a little bit. Yeah, that that was, I, dude, I don't even know where to start with that thing. Like, I, to this day, it still astonishes me that that even happened. And to be honest, when I boated and released it, like, I was shaking with adrenaline and everything, but I still didn't understand, like, the significance of that, to be honest with you. But that was actually in Long Beach. Oh, it was in um, Long Beach. I thought it was yeah, in Long yeah, for some reason. I was oh, fishing the break wall. Yeah, that's in, that's in Long Beach. I was fishing the break wall, and I had gone um, for a day session. It was it was me and my girlfriend. And um, we went, and we were just fishing for bass, just kind of enjoying it, like a, like a day trip. And um, we'd got out there early. We'd only planned on fishing like a half day. And it was it was crazy because the wall the wall is interesting. Like at night, it almost bites every night, almost. You know, there's nights that are better than others, but right. So we, we, when you go in the day, there's days where it bites really good, but most of the time it sucks. Like most of the time, the wall is really difficult to figure out in the day. But this day in particular, uh, Sophie and I, we had it was biting. Like it was insane for probably two hours before that. Um, we had like three bass in the boat at a time, like a rig fish, swim bait fish, or kind of anything you wanted. And then that bite kind of fizzled out and we had drifted the stretch a couple of times and we were like, all right, like, let's move, let's move. Like the wind picked up a little bit. We'll move in and like, kind of, you know, chill out for a little bit. We'll probably take off soon. And we start fishing the inside of the break wall. This is an inside fish. And, um, yeah, like it was getting to the point where the boat had, I don't have a trolling motor. So the boat had drifted off the wall enough for, for me to want to reposition it. And I think we were going to do like two more drifts and, and I was winding in to recast and, and it, that's when it bit, it probably maybe two feet out of visibility. I mean, the visibility wasn't that great at the time, but I, I, I there's no way I would have been able to see it eat, but it ate towards the surface. And it almost felt like it, when you're winding a weedless swim bait over kelp and you hit a kelp stringer, it kind of feels like you bump into something and it's kind of, it kind of moves because the kelp's got a little bit of give, but it just feels dead. You know what I mean? Like you right, feel like right. you hit something. And that's exactly what it felt like, except it would not pull. Like it grabbed it and I felt like the sponginess. Stuck. Right, and right. It, yeah, and it was like kind of weird. And I was like, what? And I was so close to the boat. So, you know, I, and this is all happening in, you know, split second. Like your mind is just, so I get that bite and I, oh, like I torque into it. And I thought it was a yellowtail, to be honest with you. Like it, initially the thing just took off. Like I, I was using 40 pounds. Turned and burned. Yeah, literally. I was going to ask, what is the, what did you have on there? 40 pound, luckily? Yeah, 40 pound. Well, you nice. know what's crazy? Is I what was the leader? Fish, I don't even fish 40 anymore. The leader was 40. Oh, yeah. wow. So and you were what, just fishing break. calicos? Yeah, we were just and fishing six, bass. So a 40 pound leader and 60, yeah. it 60 was pound braid. 40 pound Iser, yeah. 40 pound wow. Iser, it, it's mono. It wasn't even it, floral. Right. So, yeah. So I, I don't even fish 40 pound anymore for any type of calico fishing usually it's 60 or 50 liter wow wow but anyway yeah it was on a neck breaker a warbait's neck breaker and, a, and a, one of the kicker pk5s the swim bait and um yeah i was winding in it bit and i hooked it and it took off and i was like oh dude it's a yellowtail it's a totally yellowtail and i'm like in my head i'm already mentally preparing myself like dude this thing's coming off I, i'm not gonna land it right i'm not right. gonna be heartbroken when it happens like it's fine you know this is like whatever and then it started to kind of fight like different like and then i was like dude is it like a white sea bass like it was like kind of staying down and like not right you know it was kind of acting a certain way and then yeah like when that thing came to the surface dude like it came up like a grouper like a goliath grouper if you've seen like youtube videos of that it just comes up kind of belly up and just lays there like you know and it didn't do anything and to be honest like i was <laughs> dude when i was looking at that thing like i had the rod in my hand and i'm like what like what is going on dude i was like there's no way i'm like my first thought was okay that's a broomtail grouper but then i started thinking like dude like i'm in long beach like fishing the inside of the break wall like there's no way i'm like this has got to be this is like this is what like i couldn't even understand that's crazy dude i've never yeah. seen that like how many but you said you like somebody else told you that like they had caught something 
Like someone was like, yeah. oh yeah, you can catch him there, right? Like after the fact, like yeah, dude. So then I got one at that I, spot. I posted it, and then obviously it got it got quite a bit of interaction. Um, a lot of local guys too, and like, dude, I have I've been fishing a long time, but I haven't been fishing the wall like some of these guys. Like I know some of these older guys, they grew up fishing the wall, and they they have years and years and years on it, and like I don't have that for the wall, you know, like I right, you know. But these, I get messages from these guys like divers, uh, other fishermen. They're they're saying like, oh yeah, we used to practice dive there for you know the company I used to work for, or whatever. We used to see them there all the time. Or like I've hooked stuff that's broken me off, and I always thought it was a broom tail. I had a guy send me a photo of like a twelve pounder. He was holding it like that, like lipping it wow. in that exact spot. Yeah, but the, yeah. apparently for those of guys there, that don't know, yeah, you can't keep them, so you got to release them. I heard grouper's good eating too. I think I've had grouper in Florida. I got a lot of those messages too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had some of this restaurant in Florida. It was like, dude, it was legit. It was legit. Yeah. Like cooked up all nice. I bet it is. Yeah. is it white meat, right? Yeah. 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 Cool. It's really good. So why do you fish? Um, Everybody's like tripping out on how heavy you go. Why do you fish so heavy for the calicos? Like dude, the no, be, I, it doesn't matter. It, it does not matter. Like they're not looking at your line thinking like, oh, I'm not going to eat that. Like, you know what I mean? They're not like a calico is an opportunistic feeder. Like uh, not only that, but they swim in school. So they're competitive and you know, like it, all of that stuff factors in. Like ideally I'd fish 60 pound fluoro as my leader for everything. Like I, I just fished uh, with Randy a couple days ago locally on the coast and I'm fishing 50 pound leader. Like right. 50 pounds, like a lot of calico guys use 50 pound. The only reason I didn't use 60s is because I ran out. <laughs> but yeah 60 pound is where it's at like especially the wall like if you ru you're rubbing into rocks like you know you're fishing structure what happens if you hook a 10 pound calico you know what i mean like i i want to eliminate every every you know chance of failure possible they have 10 pound calicos there on yeah. the wall yeah. yes wow absolutely i know there is there has to be there there i 100 I, I guarantee you there's more than one i bet there's a lot I, there's guys who like i said earlier like guys who have fished it their whole lives guys who are in their you know 40s 50s who have fished it since they were kids uh, there are stories of guys catching them like teeners like where they think wow. they're they're like a, a 13 14 pound bass and like i i don't doubt it at all that's crazy yeah. so is it it's, so it's mostly a structure thing over on the wall For those of you guys that don't know can explain to them what the wall is real quick yeah so the wall it's so long some these, of the san diegans may, maybe aren't so yeah it's it's i mean it's the same it's it's very comparable to like the the zuniga jetty is that how it's pronounced yeah yeah the jetty yeah. so it, it's it's basically a jetty except the wall is a lot higher out it's of the high. water. yeah it's it's fully dry spots on the wall like you know like, but um yeah so I, I believe it's it's close to like nine miles long eight miles it's long yeah it's pretty long. So the port of Long Beach, it's like one of the largest, you know, shipping like import places in in the world. Like it's it's very large and they use that wall, you know, to protect the swell and all that. And it, it creates like a bay. But the wall, it's just rocks. You know what I mean? It's just rocks. And it's, you know, an, an, a, a decline and just like anything else, really. But it's just heavy structure. There's kelp that grows on it in certain times of years in certain areas. And it's loaded with bass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sweet. That is pretty sick. I'm gonna have to get up that go up on your boat, man. Take Dude, me over yeah, there. I, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I got the kid, but I don't know if you're you're allowed to be up late, but I, I'd like to take you at night. Yeah, it's it's not that I'm not allowed, it's a physical limitation of being old. Dude. <laughs> Staying up late. I'm young, not even that. It, that's not true. <laughs> I, I've just I've gotten bed my whole life, dude. I've never been like a, a late night guy. I feel well, like I'm, I'm an early riser guy. Like, dude, even you want to get like, up at fish 4 a.m. I'm like, no problem. You want to go out after like 7 8 p.m. I'm like, I usually like I try to launch, like, I try to fish for an hour in the daylight, like during sunset, and then go into the night. Yeah. yeah. But if it's for like a legendary, like, I'll fish at night if it's for fishing, right? Especially it's like I've stayed up plenty of night looking for bluefin and stuff. So it's, it's oh, not yeah. like I won't do it. Yeah. For sure. It's good. Yeah. The, the pla that place is pretty good. There's nights where you, it's every cast, dude. Like you can it, literally, you, the second it hits the water, you're swinging. Like it's, there's nights where it's really like that. Like it's, it's really good. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Next week, next couple of weeks, I have to get out there and 
Dude, yeah, yeah. You if we show me. in the rain, like you know, any I would love to go like right after a rain. And a lot of guys don't like that, but I love that dirty water, like nasty, murky. That's a bit to yeah. me. We've yeah. been hearing that a lot. Um, a lot of people liking the murky water. Yeah, so, I love that like, stuff. Right after the rain and like it, it floods, it washes all that stuff from the rivers and all that. It gets gnarly. Yeah. I think is you have the same. I mean, my kind of theory on that is it basically it's a, the fish still got to eat, but you've eliminated like some of their senses, right? Like you've taken vision almost out of it completely. And then yeah, yeah, you got to sure. think scent too is like got to be crap. It's they're almost just on feel at that point, you know. Yeah, feel yeah. and hearing are probably the only two things that they're really using. I've never thought of it like that. Honestly, I, like I think I, that's why we benefit from it. I usually think like like they're they're more comfortable to come out because there's more cover. You know what I mean? Like murky water, they're they're harder to see, like for predators to get them. So they feel more comfortable to come out and eat. Yeah, I, I think it's both ways, but in the same reason, that's how they're eating because they know the prey can't get yeah, yeah. Because, because they've got the cover. It's the same. Away. Yeah, I think yeah. it's the exact same idea. Yeah. Yeah. And I think some of that is just because of the loss of senses too, you know. For sure. Um, Predators and all. Because they do. And we've, I went over this a couple of weeks ago. Like we know fish have actually relatively good sight, but it, when it comes to water, it doesn't, they lose it very quickly because just visibility wise, they, they, literally can't do it if you put them in like a clean fishbowl they can see really well but they lose their vision i think that's why it's on those crystal clear days it's very hard because oh yeah <laughs> i think they can see things and they're like nah that ain't legit hard. i'm not gonna eat that yeah yeah i mean how often do you go to the end of a dock and look down and see spotties like, they don't want to be seen yeah they want to hide. like yeah, yeah 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 even if you can see on the bottom it's like hard to see Buto's clubbing days are over, bro. They never started. <laughs> I've been to a club like maybe twice in my entire life. Maybe. Fishing's more fun. Fishing's maybe. way more fun. Maybe. <clears throat> what the hell do you do at a club? Listen to some lame ass music and stare at each other. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you can't talk. It's too loud. No offense to anybody here that's into the club scene. It's I, I never really understood it. We took us to sleep on the sport right, right after. Yeah, dude, I did. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> I did. I went on a fishing trip with Dave Rage. We went on like a two day or something. And yeah, right when the boat left, dude, it was like 7 p.m. I was like, I'm going down in my bunker, dude. Yeah, dude. And, and I slept till like we came out the next morning. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Yeah, you could ask Kevin too. We went on a fishing trip and it was like, he had to wake me up because they were catching bluefin <laughs> and I was sleeping down in the. <laughs> down in the bottom he was like he's shaking me awake and i was like i sat up like the undertaker and i was like and i was like what he's all dude i got a bluefin on the 600 gram and i was passed out dude yeah i'm surprised there's not a but like more wall questions i thought for sure is the kayak here you go is the wall accessible kayak accessible yes absolutely yeah from multiple points too uh, you got to be down to paddle like no question there's no getting around the paddle there's no matter where you launch it's going to be far but it's worth yeah. it i've done it i don't think it's that bad it's it's really not that bad really it's not that bad especially if you launch like cabrillo i'd say is probably the easiest launch yeah yeah it's not that far from cabrillo i mean it's far but it's not like yeah it's not it's like insurmountable a, it's a trip no, it's doable just said he had his best session in Newport a few days after the rain. The reliance on the, yeah, yeah, man. I'm I'm. I try to preach the gospel about the lateral lines, man. That's that's what I totally agree. Like that's what they're using for their main sense. Mm. It's just feeling, feeling the change and the vibration. It's that sixth sense they have that no other animals have. Clubs are a waste. Tell them, Wolfgang. Wolfgang's on the kayak right now, I think. Are you? You got to come on here and bust some raps for us, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some freestyles. Huh. Like, look at all these guys acting like they're not clubbing. It's okay, dude. You guys, you can. You don't got to act like you hate the clubs. Let you guys be out there clubbing. Looking for some thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> An on the water club would be sick. 
Would it though? Cruise ship. I've been on a cruise ship. It's pretty sick. Let's see. What about a float tube? Could you make it in a float tube? Um. Yeah. Yeah. You can. The only thing that sucks is that technically it's illegal to be on the wall. So if you like to stand on it. Yeah. At, at a certain oh, point. Yeah. So the honestly, like I, I hate to say this, but I would recommend like maybe trying to run out there a little ways and then jumping in or vice versa, like start on the shore and paddle out and then get to like the good zones and then hop out on the wall and you can walk back. Cause I know a float tube, it's like quite taxing on your body. So anyway, you can try to eliminate like the fatigue or anything like that for sure. Nice dude. So what's your, um, if you're going to the wall, what do you, or not just the wall, you're going to go out for a session. Like, what do you, what are your, like your top three baits? What are you bringing with you? My top three? Oh man. Like, what, what are like your go-tos? Like you're like, dude, I got to grab, I'm going calico fishing. I got to, I can only take three, three baits with me. Which three are you I'm taking with you? Um, That's easy. A rig, swim bait, submission jig. You have to fish deep, dude. Like there's there's days where the I swear, dude. Like the submission jig just gets bit. Like nothing else gets bit, and the submission jig smokes them. It's like a, I don't know what it is. Like I've been trying to figure it out. Whether it's like a reaction thing, like I don't know. But there's days where they will not touch the swim bait. They won't touch the a rig. But the only thing they'll eat is the submission jig, and then vice versa. Like if they're not down there, you can get them on the the single swim bait. Or there's days where they won't touch the single swim bait, but they'll eat the a rig. They'll eat the a rig. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. What yeah. about your uh, soft plastics? What are you going with? Oh, the PK kicker PKs. for sure. Nice. Yeah, the PK stuff. It's it's like super super hardy. Like you catch a hundred fish on one bait, you'd be good. So are you? <laughs> tell it, how anal are you about putting your plastics on? Do you care if they're crooked? They were going over this yesterday. Um, are you like a are you like a sloppy bait guy? Do you just slap it on, or does no. it have to be like? pristine or no, no no i'm definitely not a sloppy bait guy it has to be a certain way but my my guideline like i don't know how you would phrase that but like i, I guess i'm a little more lenient like if, you don't care if it's like the hook's a little offset or something no no if it's like a little bit off to the side i won't care but like if it's like noticeably making the bait swim a certain way then i'll change it but like i like to like if you're using a neck breaker or like a, a weighted beast hook or something like that any type of weedless application. I actually have an example I can show you to see if this will make any more sense. But like this is a PK7. That's the Calico. And it's on a weighted beast hook. And it's honestly rigged kind of perfectly because I had the time to do it and I just decided right. to. Right. But what I'll do is like when you when you 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 first rig it like that on the on the twist lock, when you punch it through the bait, I'll punch it through. And then wiggle it a lot and get it all jacked up and then i'll pull it out again and then poke it again and pull it out again and poke it again to make this hole the bait will go through it more freely oh interesting so you don't so, want a, you don't want a lot of friction when it's yeah to bite down exactly oh. and i've had that so many times where like you're so fired up and you pin a bait on real quick and you just cast it out there and it's so tight around that hook shank so it won't slide like you I, yeah i want that slide to be really free so that you know it, it in a sense that's, that's a good tip dude because I've, I've never heard of somebody doing that before dude so that's, yeah that's huge dude that's yeah huge. it's kind of huge yeah. yeah yeah it's a game changer for sure that's a good you, tip yeah you will tell the difference i promise you if you think about it and yeah do you like weed lists as opposed to uh regular yeah or does it not matter are. you're a weed yeah guy? like I love, I love like, you know, like just the traditional swim bait and like the swim bait head is great. Like it, you can use the swim bait head for so much and, you know, it's awesome. It's direct contact. It's super sensitive. But to be honest, like the neck breaker has kind of replaced that. Like I almost never tie on a lead head anymore. It's like always a neck breaker. Unless it's a place where I know there's a bunch of cover or, or not a bunch of cover. And um, like the fish are kind of like finicky in a sense because then you have the exposed hook. And I feel like in some scenarios that will up your hookup ratio, but yeah, neck breakers is the way. Kevin said he better say slow pitch jig. Yeah, dude. A, yeah. Dude, I think where I think I think he was obligated to. I didn't force him to say it. I don't want like I, I, <laughs> dude, genuinely like that's the thing that's cool about fishing us, and I, I I haven't really had a chance to say this on any type of platform, but 
like with with fishing reps and kevin and you know kevin's a fisherman like he's been fishing forever he doesn't want to fish a junk product you know what i mean so anytime there's like any talk of a new product coming in or anything like that it's always like a hey like he'll send me the link like check this out what do you think like he'll send it to another guy i'll send it to another buddy and and he'll get the intel and it's like i'm not gonna sit here and tell you that these jigs are sick if they suck you know what i mean like i'm not gonna sell you does that make sense like i hate to say that but like you can't put your name you can't sell something that doesn't work and exactly then your name you yeah your your name's on it your products on it your reputation's on it it's like Dude, you only okay. get by so far right like you can sell something that looks pretty but eventually somebody's going to use it <laughs> and if nobody's exactly. catching fish yeah you don't want to be known as like the company that's like oh yeah he's pushing products but none of them catch fish yeah you know dude you no know, it's like it's 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 on it's like very genuine like i i that jig like yeah the pk i i genuinely believe that the pk is if not the best it's probably top three saltwater swim baits for calico sand bass stuff like that created i mean yeah like a lot of people could argue that a five is kind of big for spotties but they eat it like you catch giants on it you know what i mean and like dude the submission jig fills a gap in every angler's arsenal you could say like if you pull out your tackle box there's like almost a slot missing you know what i mean like a crankbait can pick up a lot of stuff that a swim bait can't you know what i mean but the submission jig it's the same thing it fills another slot to where like it's a it's a totally different technique that can get bit better than everything else on some days you know what i mean it's it's right right yeah it's just another tool joy back yeah. says slow pitch is a reaction bite yeah just like crankbait they won't touch anything else like a swim bait under spin a rig you're practically force feeding them they don't want anything else yeah 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 that's exactly right for sure yeah, dude, I don't want I don't want everybody to think like, oh, like he works for submission, you know. He of course is going to say that, like, dude, you know, like I don't like it. I'm not going to, you know, you keep it on. Yeah, for sure. What is the um, what kind of setups you got back there? What's your mate? What's your calico? Ooh, dude, this thing's pretty wicked. So Simon from Taipan, such a cool dude in general, but also a super cool dude for giving me this. This is a, a Taipan boom sling. I don't know how many of these are made, but it's wow. super heavy duty. Yeah. A 400 size reel. And then I got the A rig on there, the war baits, a rig with the kicker baits, PK fives. And then is that a custom rod or that was just like when he discontinued or. No. So I, I to be honest, I'm not sure. I, I believe he made this for a girl named Carrie. Um, I'm not sure if anybody on here is familiar with Carrie, but she's been working with Taipan for a while. She's a, she's a fisherman from San Diego. Super cool. Oh, nice. But yeah, he actually made this rod for her, and it, technically, it's not even finished. Like you can see right here, like this, this isn't finished yet. Oh like, yeah, the yeah, wrap yeah. On the rod. This, the label is just a sticker. You know what I mean? So this one in particular is, like I guess you could say, yeah, like a, like a demo rod or something. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, so this one a long time ago, he gave it to her. It's actually designed for uh, like Colt sniper jigs, like small for small tuna and okay. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah the blue but, one. I like it because it's super beefy. You know, you need it to pull big bass out of kelp or out of a rock structure. But I like something heavy, dude. Like, I, I don't know. I, a lot of people like fishing light, but I fish super heavy all the time. I go, I go, I tend to go a little heavier too. So I'm on that. Yeah. Unless, unless I'm like fishing rock fish, but like really deep. But oh, yeah. And then I have like, I go a little heavier. This one right here. I already pulled this one out, but that's a uh, Warbait's ADH yeah, with the nice. seven. Yeah. Oh, 400 size reel. And this is one of the numbered ones from the show. I think this one's 2020. Dude, yeah, it's pretty sick. Beefy stuff, dude. Yeah, heavy duty. Like tomorrow I'll be fishing. I got quite the day tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm uh, waking up early, excuse me, and taking my boat to, um, we're going to go fish local, some kelp beds and stuff out in front of Long Beach. And then after that, I'm coming home, putting the boat away, and then driving straight back to the ramp to hop on my buddy's boat to go fish the wall at night so nice oh yeah dude that's what i like that dedication dude yeah it's super fun like eventful day it's gonna be sick we'll we'll see what happens somebody had a question um i didn't see it here would you be able to use a slow pitch jig at the wall without getting rocked it's possible like a 20 or 30 gram um i don't see see why not yeah you can you can Uh, you you'll get stuck but you can get it's it's kind of cool because the hooks the way the hooks are like if you're gonna fish the wall i would recommend fishing a 40 gram and those have a hook on the bottom and the top a lot of times you'll get stuck with just the bottom hook 
and you can wiggle it out. Like if you get on top of it or in front of it, you know, yeah. you're going to get stuck. If you're fishing in <laughs> or you just don't, you just don't let it hit the, just don't let it hit the rocks. Even if you cast yeah. it out, um, yeah. cast it and you could actually retrieve, then free spool, retrieve, free spool. What you can do without actually like setting it into the, into the bottom. Cause I cast and retrieve for calicos with those jigs all the time. Mm -hmm. And I just, I let it flutter through the kelp or the debris or whatever out there. And they'll just come up and eat it in the mid column and you just reel them in. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, the walls <clears throat> actually really good for slow pitching. I haven't slow pitched it um, up until shoot. I don't know, a couple months ago, the stuff on the Instagram, but yeah, it's the, the wall is interesting. Like where the water meets the wall, obviously you could, you could call it zero feet. Right. And then it drops down right. pretty steep and jagged <laughs> to about 20 feet. And then from 20 feet to 30 feet, it, it's very minimal decline. And then once from that's from like 20 to 35, something like that. Once you hit that 35 mark, there's a second shelf that drops down to 50. And if you fish that second shelf, so it's like staggered, first, right? Like a pyramid yeah, almost yeah. like it's the mine yeah. pyramids how they're like kind of staggered. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's like different steps to it. And yep. those fish will be anywhere in there anytime any day any night whatever you just have to find them yeah. that was awesome dave Ray said i was catching with the 20 gram switch to something else for 10 minutes no bite switch back to 20 gram i got bit on the first drop yeah dude. but i like to hear dave it's like that sometimes dude <laughs> tell him joey I, I honestly haven't heard that that much i know people that like it's not their style and i understand that you know or they've gone out and like skunked, but once you kind of learn fishing. it, it's like it's legit. You're not fishing if you don't get skunked every time and time again, you know. Yeah, I mean, you're so never. Long. Yeah, you're never gonna go out there. Don't matter what you're using. Like, if the fish don't want to eat, they don't want to eat. It's so there's nothing you can do about it, or they're just not there. It's straight up, dude. That's, that's the thing with fishing. It's like it's there's no guarantees. Carries our CCA banquet chair for San Diego chapter. You will, yeah. uh, Yo SP 30. Oh, I think that means yo speed. I was about to read the whole thing like a boomer. What, what kind of boat do you have? Um, is that for me? Yeah, I think so. I have, um, an 18 foot bay runner. Yeah. It's an old hole, but it's, it's bulletproof, man. There's no leaks in it. It's welded. Um, and the, the motor on it is actually maximum rating for that hole. So it flies. Yeah. Yeah. Go to baits for the wall. Yeah, he just answered that it was a rig with what the PK five is a swim bait, like mm -hmm. an under underspin or no neck breaker. Uh, I'd go neck breaker, but underspin gets bit. And then the slow pitch jig, nice. It's mission fishing slow death jigs. Dude, the sauce. I'm you. I, I almost don't want not to not me. sponsored. I just don't want to tell people about it because it gets bit. But <laughs> Salty said he's getting stoked for the next SBS. No, dude. I mean, how are you going to fish with Brian, who doesn't even like fishing calicos? Are all your SBS uh, entry spotties? <laughs> dude, that night, <laughs> yeah. that night one, dude, is going to be sick. The SBS event at night is going to be sick. I'm jealous, dude. Seriously jealous. That seems like I'm pretty. I'm gonna have to I have to get on that next year. That seems pretty cool. How long of a leader and what knot are you tying? Um, uh, depends. Honestly, sometimes I'll fish straight braid. It, it just depends on like your yeah, confidence. Yeah, you know, like I literally base everything off of confidence. Like if it's if it's biting and I need to have a, if I feel that I need to have a leader, then I'll fish. I don't know, like four feet or something like that, five feet, just depending. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's nights where I'll just keep biting that leader down or cutting it down, down and down, and then I get too lazy to retie, so I'll tie straight braid and it still bites. But yeah, about that long. Um, the knot from braid to leader line is an RP knot. It has a couple of names, but I don't know. You make the loop, go through, go six times down, six times up, and back through the loop. So, I mean, I don't know. There's a few different names for it. I just know it as an RP. And then from... Uh, Leader line to the bait, just the San Diego jam. Nice. Good stuff, man. Where's the Taipan submission? Collab. Let's get it going, Kevin. <clears throat> yeah, dude, I've got the I've got the prototypes. Uh I've been fishing, but like Lane has said, dude, since PCS when I got them, the weather has just been trash, dude. So like 
the ones I have are pretty heavier, although I am going out uh, on a couple tuna trips the next two months. So next month, if you guys want to fish with me, I, I'm going on the um, Legend, I think the 13th to the 16th. So there's still open spots. Um, so if you guys want to fish with me, I think it was like 600, 650 bucks or something. So I think they still had like 10 spots open. So I'll be on that. If you guys want to go join, I'm going to go looking for some big tuna. Yeah, that sounds I'm, fun, dude. I'm not sponsoring or anything, but I'm going to be on it. So I'm looking for looking for some big boys on these big jigs. So if you want to fish with me, let me know. Yeah, awesome. All right, guys. So this will be the last chance. If you want to win some 80 gram ogres, I think we'll just do we'll do one each, right? Instead of both. We'll do one of the rainbow rolls. And then we'll do one of the mackerel. Type oos in the chat. Subscribe, hit that like button. You'll be put in. We'll give you guys another few minutes, and then I'll have Jessica run the um Put you guys in the calculator, and we'll see who wins. Oh, sick! What about your sponsored trip? Yeah, I am sponsoring the trip too on um, for BD Outdoors, uh, the Apollo trip at the end of May. So we'll be on that one, and that one I am sponsoring. So we'll have jigs. Um, you'll get slow pitch jigs with all that, and I will be fishing and doing content and all that stuff. So definitely check that one out too. And then I'm doing another uh, sponsored trip for Poseidon. I, that, that's later in the year, I think September. Um, I can get you guys the info for that. And I will be sponsoring that trip as well. So if you guys want to fish with me on some of these trips, let me know. Let me know. I think we got all the Oos. All the Oos guys. Somebody said. So yeah, if you guys don't have any more questions, we'll go to the poll. Let me see here. I think Jessica said. Are those the winners, Jessica? Or do they have questions? I think she might have already picked the winners. Doug Rubin hit the Doug, are you going rock fishing? Are you get so you're not gonna rock fish Saturday? I'm gonna go deep, dude. I'm I'm in I'm dropping some of these six hundos down. I'm gonna go yeah. fish like I'm gonna go fish like a thousand feet, dude. I don't care. I'm gonna go dump these in the canyon somewhere and get a workout, dude. See what we could find, yeah. Why not? All right, guys, we got the winners. So the winner of the Rainbow Roll 80 gram is Graham. Congratulations, Graham. I know we got your info, so I'll send that out. I know you're a repeat customer. Everybody clap in the chat. I know it's anticlimactic. And second... And I'll get you a new one. You won't have to take the open one. Is Spinning Rod Rebel. Marvin, dude, congratulations. That's awesome. No. Oh, the second one. That's such a sick jig. Yeah, hell yeah. I don't know. Should we give something else away, guys? Or should we just do the two? Yeah, Graham's great. Graham helped get us in uh, uh, Hogan's over there. Yeah, man. So you got any... Um, Anything else you want to share? Any any more secrets before we wrap up? Uh, <laughs> um, no, not off the top of my head. Just uh, I'll thank you for having me on here, oh, man. man. Thanks for joining. That's rad. Dude. I genuinely appreciate that. That's sick. Awesome. Yeah, well, I appreciate you coming on. You know, we got to talk about the industry a little bit and then fishing uh, just in general. Where can people find you? Oh, they can find me on Instagram, um, lane.killian. Um, and... I'm just going to put it out there, man. I'm going to start a YouTube soon. That's what I've been hearing. Hold That's myself hearing. to it. I'm just lagging. I just got to hold myself to it. So it's going to happen. We're it's a it. lot of work, dude. It's it's like anything. It's just, it's like a job. If you if you really want to like put out a lot of content, it's like, it's, it's a lot of work, dude. Editing hours. A lot of editing. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's fun. But I mean, I've, I've been slacking on content too. Like I got to get out there and do it. You just gotta send it, dude. It's half Jessica the says Jessica wants to give away the little rainbow. Should I give away a 10 gram? Why don't we get you know what? Why don't we give away um Jessica? Why don't you bring me some like a, some tens or fifteens? Since we have the 10 and 15 grams back in stock, I know we've been out for a while. Like I said, guys, we have a very, very limited stock on these, but they are back on the website, submission fishing, and tackle stores restocked on them too. So I know we've been short on those. 
but um yeah let's give like let's give a couple more things away here since you guys showed up and supported i'm ready to be picked <laughs> yeah kevin lost like five of my 15 grams last weekend really <laughs> yeah dude uh, it was biting dude it was heavy structure let's see using that uh he's over there finesse fishing huh uh, dropping that six He's got that six pound line trying to his slow rod fish was light, dude. His rod was light, but he was still using 20 pound test. I mean, you know, just unlucky. It happens, it happens. I'm not hate, I'm not hating on you, Kev, but dude, my jigs, my jigs. <clears throat> That's so funny. <laughs> he said not even. Should I give all these away? I don't know. I didn't know which ones he wanted. I just brought you a collection. We've got 15 gram sumo stellar shad this one's the bomb are you gonna put him in jessica so we'll see who wins this 15 gram sumo and then 10 gram we'll do the 10 gram assassin this is the orange pumpkin these are the hot ones dude these minis right now and then 15 gram sumo. 15 G sumos are like gold. Is that your is that your go-to? Do you like so that's a good question. Do you like the sumo or the assassin better? Or I like the it depend sumo. on the fish. For the bay fishing, I like the sumo, but for any like ocean stuff like outside the bay, I go for the assassin. Yeah, it looks like those sand bass were killing the assassin, huh? Yeah, sumo. yeah. Sumo's money. That's funny because it's like it's like split. Some people like the sumo. I use them both. Like I said, depending on the the freaking depending what they bite, you know, that's the, the different shapes, they have different vibrations, different falls through the water. So when I, you I'll, fish I'll, shears, do you fish a clip? Yeah. Yeah. Usually. Oh, okay. You clip them or no? No, I've always just tied. Yeah, two of them. Just straight tied. I like a clip just because it's easier to change, especially if I'm looking for the bite. Like if I'm trying an assassin. And it's not getting bit, I'll switch to the sumo and I don't want to yeah. retie, so I just I'll be able to unclip it real quick. Excuse and you can use like the same setups too. So yeah, definitely. He loves the sumo. 714 OC fishing. Good stuff. Rockies five, Padre Strew, bottom of the six. Arnie. Come on, dude. Give us that news. <laughs> Bringing a downer into the stream. But thanks for the update. Maybe they'll send the Dodgers home again this year. We though we got to probably probably got a lot of LA guys in here. I shouldn't say that too loud. <laughs> I was a sumo only guy before. Did you switch? What clips y'all run in? The um, they're just little like power clips. Um, you had one tied on, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that's a, oh, that's a yeah, that's a clip by kicker. Yeah, just show them. It's like the same same yeah. same idea. It's but super you get them small. This one's super beefy. This yeah. one's like 175 pound. It's it's pretty large. That's a seven inch bait too. So like for size comparison. Yeah. And you, so you can get those pretty small too. So even when you're fishing bait, but when I'm fishing, I don't fish them on like the 600 gram stuff. Or if I'm fishing for like yellowtail, I probably won't. But yeah, you can get, get even little small ones for like um, 20 gram, 10 gram. Uh, it, I think it helps with the motion a little bit. And it um, just, just for changing and convenience, I think it's good. Muto, do you sell your own submission jigs in Orange County? Yeah, dude. We've got um, – Kevin should let you know. Orange County, we've got Hogan's Tackle, um, Island Tackle. They're in Orange County, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm Fisherman's sure. Access. Um, who else has them? Shark Bait's got them. I think those are the Orange County stores. There's some more. If you go to fishingreps.com, there's actually a store finder. Young's, well, they're in Bellflower, right? So I don't think that's yeah. Orange County. They're a little um, north. And then Bob Sands, do you know where they're located? That's LA. That's LA as well. Okay. But yeah, we, we do have def definitely have a couple stores up there. You can go get them for sure. Yeah, the store finder in uh, on Fishing Reps website is legit for sure. Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah, both have their place. I agree. I mean, that's why I made the two were like so different because it's like you get a get different profiles for sure new member basement boards dude thank you so much oh i wanted to say 
as far as member goes, if you're like the highest tier of member, the Ocean Warlord, I'm going to send you two of these um, for being the highest member counts. You get jigs with that membership anyways, but yeah, I appreciate that. I really do. Thanks for joining. Yeah, Young Stackle, we stocked them, dude. They got them in. Uh, I saw a post today, so you can go get them over there. Yeah, Hogan, Shark Bait, they got them. That's right. Good stuff. Fisherman's Access. Carter. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Oh, Carson. Yeah, you guys are on it. All right, guys. We're going to check. I'm giving away three more jigs. Looks like we got the winners. Uh, do we have Marvin's info? I think we do because he's ordered from us before. Uh, give away a little guy. A little bit. <laughs> Jessica says it's unfair, but Joey Basson, he won one of the. Uh... Joey always wins, dude. But he fishes these, so I'm happy you get one of those. So you get a 15 gram sumo. Oh, another guy I know who's going to put these to use. John Escobar, the 10 gram assassin. And we had one more, Jessica. I only see the two winners on here. Pull one. Oh, and um, I don't know if he's still in here, but Flow Roll, BJJ, and MMA, you were the other winner. I don't think I know your real name or have your info. So hit me up on Instagram if you see the stream. If you're still here and you're still in the business of watching the watching the live stream, let me know. We'll send those over to you. But the other guys, I've, I've got all your guys' info because I know you've ordered before. So thank you for that. Sharkbait. Yeah, they don't carry. Sharkbait like carries the <laughs> – they got a lot of the big stuff, right? Like the – they're like the tuna guys. They, they, they hopped onto that tuna stuff. Uh, but ask them, dude. Go in there, Carl. Be like, dude, where's my where's my submission sends 15s? That's how they'll get them in, you know. Show them you they've got like a, a demand for them for sure. Just put in an order, dude. I appreciate that. That's awesome, dude. Thank you guys. So, anyways, Lane, I'll let you go. Oh, they have 20 grams. I know we've been running late, dude. Almost two hours, hour and 38 minutes. Uh, we'll have you on again. And um, we got some good stuff coming up and some other good shows. And I'll talk to you about them later. And yeah, dude. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate appreciate the knowledge, appreciate the insight, and I know everybody does too. So, oh yeah, dude, that's no problem. Absolutely. Like, thank, dude. Thanks for the opportunity to have me yeah. on. Super stoked. Like, this is fun. It's been a pleasure dude, working hours, with dude. you and fishing with you. Why, dude? Right? It's like crazy, huh? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, awesome. All right, man. We'll see you again. All right. Have a good Peace. night, guys. Later. All right, guys. Thanks, Lane Killian. If you haven't uh, followed him, go check him out on Instagram. Thank you for uh, the new members. Uh, and anybody that ordered jigs, I really appreciate it. Um, not necessary, but I do, I do appreciate the support helps keep the stream on. Uh, thanks Lane. I think that was a great show. He had a lot of good insight and Lane's a young dude too. And, um, I, I love seeing that, you know, it's like the young guys are who we need in this industry. It's them growing up and seeing the next generation. I mean, it's just really important. You know, it's fishing is one of those things I don't want to see go by the wayside, you know, we're. People think it's antiquated or something like that. Taipan rods. What's going on, man? We were just talking about you. Talking about your bomb ass rods. Everybody wants that uh Taipan slow pitch. Yeah, dude. Missed it. We've been on for an hour and 40 minutes. You on the Arizona time. You guys do have a time change, right? Are we on the same time now? Or did we switch times from Arizona? You guys are the only ones that like got it right. You don't mess with the a stupid ass time change. Yeah, guys. Yeah, big gear, big gear lanes. We're going to start calling him. Uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining the stream. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for all the support. Uh, yeah, you can get slow death jigs at our local tackle stores. Check out fishing reps if you want them. Follow Lane. Dude, he's got a great Instagram. He's always catching stuff. Uh, he's always there to help. Uh, he's just a great guy. Uh, looking forward to fishing with all you guys again. Remember, MMFC is having an, a little get together. It's at Tidelands Park Saturday. Um, I think they're launching at 7 or 7.30. So check that out if you guys are having trouble catching spotties and you got a kayak. Um, these guys will show you how it's done. So uh, take advantage of that. And if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to hit me up on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, not Facebook. Instagram and YouTube, and we'll get back to you. All right, guys. And next week, we got another good guest. I think um, Tony from the Grande has verbally agreed to come on. So... She'll come on. I know she got a lot going on. She's working with 
like BD Outdoors. I think she just got engaged. So it's like she's been crazy busy this week. Um, so uh, hopefully she comes on next week and that'd be cool. She's a deckhand uh, for the Grande out here in San Diego. And, and she's got some good insight on like um, tuna and stuff like that. So hopefully she makes it next week. That'd be super cool. And the week after that, I don't want to spoil it, but I've got like another kind of uh, interesting um something new we're gonna try here uh, with with a couple other people so i think it'll be fun all right guys thanks for watching get your black belts and fishing till next time Oos.